Hi everybody, Physics Ninja, and welcome to my video on Shoot the Monkey. Here's our problem for today. We have a monkey hanging on a branch, and there's a hunter located at some distance D away from that monkey. The monkey is up above the ground some distance uh, H. Now, what is going to happen is as soon as there is a shot, there is a flash that gets emitted from the gun, and the monkey will let go at that exact instant in time in order to try to avoid being shot. The question is, at which angle should you fire the gun in order to ensure that you're going to hit this monkey? Again, the monkey's falling straight down, and you're firing this Nerf bullet here, but that's going to follow some projectile motion. So what is that initial angle that you should fire the shot? Uh, question two says, what is the initial velocity that's required if I wanted to hit the monkey halfway between its starting point and the ground? And the last one is what require uh, what would be the initial velocity that would be required if I want to hit it as he's falling just before he hits the ground. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up equations of motion for the monkey and also for this bullet here. So again, and the monkey lets go when he sees the flash, so that is basically at time equals to zero, all right? Everything starts at time equals to zero. So let's first start with the monkey. Let me do it over here. For the monkey, it's easy because the only thing we're really interested in is what is the monkey's position as a function of time. And the, munction, uh, the monkey is basically only doing free fall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose just a standard coordinate system. I'm going to choose x uh, to be positive x to be to the right and positive y to be in that vertical direction. And this is what the equation of motion looks like for the monkey. The position of the monkey here as a function of time is equal to this. Remember, it's an initial position plus an initial velocity multiplied by time. And again, plus one half the acceleration multiplied by t squared. Now here the acceleration of all the objects is simply straight down and the acceleration is little g, right? And the value of little g is 9.8 meters per second squared. That's it. That's our acceleration. So let's substitute inside the equation of motion for the monkey. He is initially at some height. So that y0 is that initial position along that vertical axis. I'm setting the ground to be equal to 0 right here. So this is the initial height. He lets go of that branch, therefore the monkey has zero initial velocity. So I don't have to worry about that next term. And now the next term is the term that describes the acceleration. Again, the acceleration is down, so what I'm going to do is, since it's down, I'm going to put a negative sign right here, and I'm going to call this one half little g. Little g here I've taken to be positive 9.8 multiplied by t squared. And this here is my equation for the monkey as a function of time. You can see you substitute zero in here, you're at height h. As time gets bigger, the height is going to get smaller. Okay, so that is my starting point, at least for the monkey. Now what we have to do is do an equation of motion for the bullet, okay, for that Nerf bullet. So this is what I'm going to do here for the bullet. What we're going to do here is we need equations of motion in both the x and the y direction. Okay, so we're going to have in the x direction, and we're also going to have an equation of motion in the y direction. So let's consider this x direction first. Now remember, I'm launching this bullet here with some initial velocity v0, and that means, and I'm launching it at some angle with respect to that horizontal. This is the angle that I'm trying to find here. At what angle should I fire this bullet? So I'm going to break down that initial velocity into an x component, and into an initial y component for the bullet here only. All right, so that's what this looks like. I use some trigonometry now, so I get v naught sine of the angle theta for v naught y. And for the initial component in the x direction, you should have v0 cosine of the angle theta. I'm going to need both of these in order to write my equations of motion for the bullet. So this is how I describe the position of the bullet now as a function of time. I'm going to call it x of the bullet, again, as a function of time, is going to be equal to what? Well, again, it's a similar equation of motion as the one I wrote up above, except I'm looking at the x direction. So it's that initial position, which in this case I'm considering it to be 0, so I don't have an x0 term. 
And the next term is the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by time. V0x multiplied by time, that's it. There is no acceleration in the x direction, so you're all done. So the next thing you do now is you simply get rid of uh, v naught x and substituted by what we have over here. Uh, v0, right, the speed multiplied by the angle. Let's try that again. That should be cosine of the angle theta. And then multiplied by time. Okay, so this is what we have for that x position. What about the y coordinate of the bullet now? The y coordinate of the bullet now, the bullet starts at the origin right here. So its initial position is zero. We do have, however, an initial velocity for the bullet, right? And that initial velocity of the bullet is V naught sine of the angle theta multiplied by time. And now we also have minus one half little g t squared for its height, right? This describes the height of the bullet as a function of time. So there we go. We have actually three equations. Uh, we have our monkey equation that we had, and now we're going to have these two equations here that describe the position of the bullet as a function of time. Now we have to go on the other page and combine these in order to find this angle when I should fire the gun in order to hit this monkey. Now, just a comment, I never wrote the x equation for the monkey as a function of time, but that one's very, very easy, right? The monkey is only falling straight down. So with respect to this coordinate system here, that initial position of the monkey is simply equal to d, right? The distance here along this horizontal axis. So in principle, I could have also written this guy just to have two equations for each object. All right, now, how do we solve for this? Well, remember, what we want is we want to hit the monkey. So that means that we want the bullet and the monkey to be exactly at the same position. You want not only their x positions to be equal to each other, that could be one equation, but you also want their y coordinates here to be at the exact same position. This is how you're going to ensure that we're going to get a direct hit. So let me just write this down. And now all you have to do is solve these two equations here. And again, we want to solve for what is the angle theta. Theta is going to be an unknown in this problem. And let's see how we do that. So let's look at equation one first. So equation one says the x coordinate of the monkey, which is d, <laughs> must be equal to the x coordinate of the bullet. Well, that is what? That is v0 cosine of theta multiplied by time. This is what we get from equation one. Notice that in order to get a hit, what we require here is that uh, our time t should be equal to that distance divided by the speed and also divided by cosine of the angle theta. So if the time for the objects to be at the same x coordinate equals to this, we're going to have them at the same x position. Now what we also want is equation two to be satisfied. We need their y coordinates to be equal to the same. So let's go on the next page and look at this criteria. All right, let's look at our y equation now. So our y equation is equation two. We want the position of the monkey, which is h minus one half little g t squared to be equal to the height of the bullet, um, which is this v naught sine of theta uh, t Again, minus one half gt squared. And look at what happens over here. The second term minus one half gt squared is on both sides of the equation. You simply get rid of it. And the second thing we're going to do now is we're going to substitute our time into this expression. Remember, this is the time when this bullet x coordinate is aligned here with the x coordinate of the monkey. And that's exactly what you want, right? So this time here, I'm going to substitute it as d divided by v0 cosine of theta. And now there is something very important that happens for this problem. Look what you have. You have v in the uh, numerator, v naught. And you also have v naught here in the denominator, so you can get rid of it. The other thing you could do is you can combine the sine and the cosine and simply write that as tangent. So you're left with d multiplied by tangent of the angle theta. 
So my last expression now is that tangent of the angle theta, and theta is the angle that I want to launch this projectile at. You can write this as being h divided by d. Now let's think about what does this mean right here. What is the ratio of h divided by d, and what is this angle on the figure? h was this initial height over here, and d was this distance. So what you have to do now is imagine if we were going to close out this right angle triangle right here. If I draw a line that goes like this all the way to um, the top of the monkey, that wasn't a very good line. I could do one better than that. If I draw a line that goes here from that initial position, right, this angle theta here that we're interested in is tangent of the angle theta is given by h over d. This is quite an incredible uh, answer. It only depends on this triangle right here. This is what you call the line of sight. So as long as you have this aimed properly and you have a line of sight, if the bullet fires and at the same instant this monkey here lets go, you are going to hit the monkey. Now it doesn't tell me exactly where I'm going to hit the monkey, but this result here says it doesn't depend on the initial velocity. As long as the bullet carries far enough, it has enough range to at least reach the monkey, right? If you fire it with just a little bit of speed and it doesn't get there, surely it's never going to hit the monkey. But there's a whole range of values where you can actually hit this monkey. So now let's go look on the other page and we're going to substitute some numbers in here and see what happens. All right, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to assume here that this height is 2 meters and that the initial distance here is 4 meters from this monkey. What angle here should I fire the gun? My calculations let me to this expression that tangent of theta should be equal to h divided by d. So we substitute. This is 2 over 4, which simplifies to 1 half. Therefore, in order to hit that monkey, I need to have my angle here uh, to be equal to, again, inverse tan of 1 half. And that there uh, should give me an angle, if I did the calculation right, you use the calculator for this, gives you something that is around 26.6 degrees. All right, you fire the weapon here at 26.6 degrees, which is this angle made by this uh, triangle right here. Um, you're going to hit the monkey. All right, question two says, what initial velocity is required now if I want to hit the monkey when h, when the height is h over two? So h is two meters, so that means I want to hit it right here when it's one meter above the ground. So how would I do this? Well, what I want to do now is I want to solve this equation, and I want to solve it when its y coordinate is h over two. So you set up my equation. So you set h over two over here. This is equal to h minus one half g, and now the time, again, the time is fixed, right? The time is controlled by what's going on in this x direction. And I have my expression for the time as d divided by v naught cosine of theta. And I have to square that term. So my goal now is to solve for the unknown. The unknown is this expression right here, v naught. So be a little bit careful. You have to do a bit of algebra in order to do this. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, what you're going to have here is h over 2 because you have 1 h and here you have h over 2. All those negative signs are going to cancel out and you're going to be left with this. Uh, this is going to be d squared over v naught squared cosine squared of theta. Again, just bring v naught on the other side and do some math. You can fact, uh, cancel out these factors of 2 right here and we're almost done. So I can write one final expression for of that initial velocity or the magnitude of that initial velocity here i can write it as this this would be g d squared divided by h and divided by cosine squared of the angle theta now we substitute our numbers so we have 9.8 uh, the distance d was 4 so i have to square that value h is that initial height that is 2 meters and now here we have cosine squared of 26.6 degrees. All right, we put all of this under the calculator, and we get something that is approximately 9.9 .9 meters per second. So if you fired at 9.9 .9 meters per second, and the angle is 26.6 degrees, you will hit this target right here at one. It's one meter above the ground. Okay, what if now if I wanted to hit the target right here, right before it hits the ground? Right? What initial speed would be required in that case? 
All right, final problem says, what initial velocity is required to hit the monkey just before he hits the ground? That means you want to hit the monkey right at this position right here. Okay. That means that the final position of the monkey, or the bullet for that matter, is equal to zero. So we have to solve this. Minus one half g, and instead of writing t, we're just going to substitute uh, t for this time that we obtained in the first part. And we have to square that value. Again, you're solving for v naught. Right? So you bring h on the other side, you cancel out those negative signs. So you get h, one half g d squared, uh, v naught squared, cosine squared of theta. Again, you're simply solving now for v naught. Uh, there is going to be this uh, difference over here. Uh, we're going to have g d squared just like we did before. However, now what we have here is 2 times h down here in the denominator and multiplied by cosine squared of theta. And now I'm going to substitute everything in here. 9.8 for little g. Uh, d is 4. Square that guy. Here I get 2 times h is 2 for this problem. And then my cosine of 26.6 degrees. Oh, don't forget to square that value. Uh, at the end, you put that in a calculator, and we're going to get 7 meters per second. All right, so you see that if you shoot it at 7 meters per second, it's, that's the minimum speed. You must shoot it at least 7 meters per second. If you shoot it at 5 meters per second, that total distance is not going to be 4 meters anymore. You're going to shoot it. It's not even going to reach the monkey. So you must have it at least 7 meters per second, but if it's bigger than 7, you're going to hit it at some, <laughs> some distance here for any value bigger than 7. If you shoot it very, 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 very fast, the fastest you can ever make it, the bullet would basically follow this line of sight and you would hit it right away. Okay, so there is a whole range of values that you can find. This is such a nice problem. All right, I set up this small simulation here in Desmos just to have a look at the data. So our bullet here is down here by this blue point, and here's our monkey. Say the center of the monkey is roughly at two meters in height and four meters down here along this x-axis. And what we're going to do now is just move the bullet in the projectile motion. That dotted line is that line of sight, right? So that angle of this red line with respect to the horizontal is 26.6 degrees. So as I move my slider here, as I move time forward, you can see the monkey starts to drop. The projectile is still reaching its maximum height, and boom, there you go. At a time of approximately uh, 0.45 seconds, I am going to hit the monkey right here. So that's for the first case, for the velocity equals to 9.9 .9 meters per second. All right, here's case number two now. We've set the initial velocity equal to 7, so let's have a look. The bullet is fired, the monkey starts falling. We've reached the maximum height of the projectile. Now we're going back down, and there we go. We're going to hit it right on the ground. Boom. <laughs> Again, the picture is a little bit big. You have to consider the size of the monkey now, but we get the picture. This happens at about uh, 0 0.6 something seconds over here. All right, one more case since I'm having so much fun here. I've set that initial velocity down to a very big number. In this case, 50 meters per second. Let's have a look at what happens now. Boom, the shot goes off, and look at that projectile. You're still in just the initial. The monkey just begins to fall, and boom, you can see that blue dot is going to strike that monkey now right here. Right? So in the limit of very big velocity, you're hitting that maximum. You're basically following the line of sight here. And actually, I've struck this monkey here in a very short amount of time. In this case, it's close to like 0 .09 seconds when that blue dot hits this monkey.